Go, it's on the surface. Sometimes they feel big. Well, off all right. Sometimes the big ones do hang in the water, don't they? Better one, mate. Left, left. That's a better one. That's a better one. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Thank you, mate. Top man. Great fight. Safely in the net by the boys. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully a few more to come on the next tide now. Hi, I'm Gareth Griffiths, a UK shore fishing guide. Here's my top five tips for helping you catch taupe from the shore. First thing we do when we uh, turn up on the mark, we get you before first and then first light, out with the feathers, catch plenty of fresh bait. We do catch taupe on the frozen mackerel if there's not many fresh about we do use frozen they will take it but fresh out fish is frozen nine times out of ten so if you can get fresh mackerel I'd suggest using that obviously later on in the year the tub will take the head in bluey bluey and squid wraps we've had them on and fresh whiting is a great bait as well in a later on in the year but in the summer months all we use is fresh mackerel snip a tail off Head down, plenty of cotton. And there we have it. You can pop a few holes in the belly as well with a grip lead. Just like that. That's a few more juices out. Sorted. Just as we're doing the top five tips with Ben, rod goes over, tow on, about six or seven pound. Keep the fresh bait going out. Every 15, 20 minutes, reel in, fresh mackerel on, straight back out. One thing I do after I've casted uh, my bait out, whether I have a bite straight away or after five, 10, 15 minutes, if it's not a taupe, it could be a dogfish, spider crab, bring your, your, your bait straight back in, put a fresh bait straight back out. Most of the taupe uh, take the bait within the first 15, 20 minutes. So fresh bait is crucial. If it's a doggy or a spider, whip it in, fresh bait straight back out. The rods and reels you're gonna need is uh, something along the lines of a compressor SS, Creed, or so on. These are the baits you're going to be casting. Seven or eight ounce whole fresh mackerel. And uh, this is my rig, long pulley rig, probably six and a half, seven foot long. Um, 150 pound Rovex 10x with a 90 pound wire bite end, probably about 10, 12 inches long. Uh, the hooks, eight O tamers, and a six O tamer on the bo bottom. Or you can use 8 uh, Manta Extras or various BMX hooks. They all do the same same job. And uh, obviously, the bigger the bait, the heavier the lead. That's what I use. So that mackerel here, that's with a seven ounce. We do use eights and ten ounces. Helps tow the bait out into a headwind. Stops the bait spinning when you cast. Sometimes when the uh, 
roll in the line when they slack line you. Yeah, two seconds. There's a little bit slack, I didn't see anything else. Turn it up there. Oh, it's pulling now, here we go. Yeah? yeah. Now it's going, now it's going. That's better. That's better than the last one, guy. I think so. That's just rough. Go. Go. This one I'll get tangled today. Double shot of taupe, uh, just wound one in, and uh, when we were landing that one, the other taupe broad run off, so we ended up with a double header on the rocks, same time. Well done, Bench. Third taupe of the day. Number three of the day. Number three of the day. Hopefully, a uh, few bigger ones to come in here. Hopefully, some more now. If you are lucky enough to get your first tub, you're going to need to think about how you're going to land it. So, you're going to need to get yourself a big landing net with an extra long pole, which is what I use. Or if you're fishing from a height like we are today, you're going to need to get yourself a tidy drop net. Nice long rope, decent netting. Um, once you've landed your toe, a nice waist sling. Today we're using a Rapala one. I know Sentry make one, they know we're making one. But today we've got a Rapala one, which is well used. Does the job. It's not quite big enough for the larger toe. They do stick out the ends, but if you put the head in, keep the head and the pectoral fins just in, it does hold them. I've had toe in these, to over 60 pounds. And, uh, yeah, they do the job. T-bar we're using, push and pull. Sometimes if the hook goes around the gill cover on a, a tope, you can carefully get it out and position it, push it, and so rather than just ripping it straight out with the T-bar, you can push and pull with these, which I also use on the common skate. Right, when, when we're uh, tope fishing, we do get a lot of drop runs, and it's these, uh, these little culprits, but they're small mouths, they pick up the bait, run, drop the bait, and you, th you know, you're not always going to hook them because the mouth is tiny on them. They're still great to catch, probably about two or three pounds. Look, look, look amazing in a, in a fish tank. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so they pick up the bait, run off, drop it. Happens a few times during the session. But, uh, can't hook them all. Let's get her back. I suggest when you're fishing a certain mark, your chosen venue, fish it over small tides, big tides, different times of tides, because the taupe can feed. You know, you need to work out when they're feeding on what size tides they feed on best. best. So. If they're not there one day, they could be there the next day, and so on. So you're better off working a mark out and staying on that mark until you do eventually catch one, rather than uh, fishing a number of different venues. And, you know, I know lads who've not had a run in three years and they've given up tub fishing. But once you've worked them out, they're pretty easy to catch. If you just write down what time of tide you're catching them, and what type of weather is best and things like that. It all helps. So.